So we have been on this path to intimacy and fulfillment, as we call it, and the path to the dream marriage. And the first part of it is attitude. And we've spent the first two sessions on attitude, and now we're on awareness, um, the second part of that. And awareness is really about seek first to understand. And let me just remind you guys that, that you want to be taking good notes throughout this. And the best place to take those notes is on the marriage blueprint prep worksheet. And you can in individually have your own sheets. At some point, you're going to want to combine those notes and create a marriage blueprint prep worksheet together. And then from there, you will be able to create your marriage blueprint poster. That is a visual that um, we encourage our couples to hang on their wall, maybe even frame it. And, um, and it's, uh, it's basically that strategic plan for your, for your marriage and creating that dream marriage uh, that you both envision together. Okay, so here's that path I was just talking to. We, we, the full thing is attitude, awareness, and then we'll be on a, uh, awareness for the next for this session and next session then we'll move into acceptance and then we got the attraction and awakening piece but uh, we're just reminding you and it really takes intention to to do the common sense stuff that works and it's really just if you remember seek to understand and it's not about agreement you don't have to agree on everything you don't even have to agree you don't even have to like the behavior of your spouse but you can still understand why they're doing it and it's operating with intention. Intention is everything. And in your, in your marriage blueprint, there are intentions that you write down that you want to live by. So you want to understand yourself and your spouse. And then just a little bit about understanding gender differences. Now, we not, might not be getting into everything today. Again, we have two weeks to go over this stuff. But first of all, I want you to take a look at this the five levels of marriage. Stop doing. And so, what would you need to start doing? What would you need to stop doing? And what knowledge, resource, or skill do you need to acquire to get there? For example, um, for Tanya and I, we're going from that partners to passionate. We had to, we had to realize, you know, what was it that was missing in our marriage to create that passion? So we had to start doing some, some research and gain knowledge on what are others doing? What do the experts say about creating passion in your marriage? So we did a lot of work on that. So I'll give you guys about a minute for that. About the nail. So the active listening tool would be, you, you bring up what you're hearing, you repeat back, you restate what you're hearing. So it, a lot of times we'll just sound like what I hear you saying is, but really want to connect with the feeling. Because once you do that, as um, I'm, I'm sure we've all experienced this from time to time, like you, you connect to that person's feeling, uh, you connect to what they're going through at their core, their emotions. That creates a bridge. First of all, we talk about connection and increasing connection and intimacy to get to a place where we are fully intimate on all levels, uh, body, soul, and spirit. Uh, it, we need these connection points. Just, I mean, this is the basics of it. So active listening is so important, but so is assertiveness. Like so many people, uh, individuals in marriage and relationship walk around holding in what's on their mind or they're afraid that they might, um, you know, hurt their spouse um, by uh, bringing something up. So if that's the case, um, certainly everyone's in a place where they have something that's causing pain for them, but they're worried about bringing it up to their spouse. If that's the case, the best thing to do is just say that. Like, I got something on my mind, and I really want to bring it up with you, but I'm terrified to do it. I'm terrified to bring this up because I know that our normal pattern is we get into uh, an argument, we get into a fight, and I really don't want that to happen. And, but I, I can't deny that there's something going on, and I feel like I should share it with you, but I'm scared. That's assertive. To Exercise is create a wish list and make a wish list of three things you would like more or less of in your relationship. So this is where you're going to write down. All right. So, um, so, so your assignment this week is going to be take turns sharing your list, your list using the active listening and assertiveness, not you statements. So an I statement is I own how I feel about this instead of you make me feel 
uh, you make me do this is an attack. And it automatically puts your spouse into defensive mode. So you want to keep your spouse out of defensive mode. And you have responsibility to do that, right? By using I statements. And you might point to a behavior when um, this is happening, it makes me feel, you know, and this is happening could be uh, when you, uh, when, when all the dishes are left out, when you leave the dishes out, um, when you don't put away your dish, it makes me feel. So you can include the word you, but you are owning how you feel about it. So I've observed this behavior and I feel this about it and that will help keep your spouse out of defensive. So the listener's job is to repeat back and summarize what you've heard, describe the wish, and make sure you capture how the partner feels about it, if it comes true. So you're capturing the feeling. So the wish list is a real cool way to practice this common sense tool that's not commonly used. To the guys first. So you're trying to unlock that emotional connection from your wife, and you, start here, the first column, you want to go out there and hunt and kill and be on a mission and just be like driven, right? That's, that's what a guy wants. But she just wants to feel seen. And what does that mean? She just wants to feel that, you know, you notice her. So you're on mission and she's in your periphery. She's just not feeling seen. So you can be on mission and let her feel seen. You, you do it this way. You give her attention and you focus on her. So don't get so caught up in your masculine drive to do and get things done and um, to conquer that you forget about her. Right. Okay. So if she's coming at you with all this energy and it feels like an attack, the masculine energy in its most present and uh, most powerful doesn't respond to an attack. It stays present and focused. You can't be more masculine than present and focused. If you're fighting, you're actually putting on a feminine mask. Okay, okay, let's move on then. Um, so the ladies, uh, if, you want to un if you want to connect, so this is connecting emotionally. So that can be tough sometimes to, to get that, you know, in, traditionally or in general, guys aren't necessarily, uh, they're harder to connect emotionally with, right? Um, so this is your key that unlocks that emotional connection vault. So if you think about it, I want to connect with him emotionally. Here's the key to unlock that vault and get in, okay? So, you know, just to overgeneralize, you know, guy's been working all day at work and he comes home and he's a little bit late and the wife says, why are you late? Why couldn't you give me a call? Blah, 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 just like, you know, uh, criticizes. And he's just thinking, what the heck? I've been working my butt off. I didn't have a great day, it was stressful. And I, come, I wanna come home to my, my place of peace and solace and, you know, embrace my wife. And all she's doing is he just wants to be appreciated, at least acknowledge. Hey, I know you've been at work all day and you probably had a rough day. It looks like you're a little late. I'm sorry um, that that happened. You know, come on then. Control. You want to control. He wants to be free and loved. So let go of the need to control. Give freedom and trust his heart. Control yeah. and stability. And you're trying to control things. But if you let go of that need and you give him freedom and trust his heart, you will unlock his emotional connection. Mm -hmm. But the self-reflection, in what way have you been driving your spouse away and what is the most significant step you can take to start opening them up emotionally and more consistently? And what else From, can you do? Like we were talking about the last two sessions on attitude, it's what you can control. You're responsible for your relationship. This gives you some key tools on what you can do to um, impact your spouse and, and change your marriage, even if your spouse doesn't.